Hey guys, so this is another video on L'Hopital's rule and in this video we're going to talk about what if it doesn't work. This is the fourth video in this lesson series, so I've really built up L'Hopital's rule. And when I say um, does not work, so I kind of wanted to give this like a, a cute name, but really what I'm referring to are limits that keep cycling as you take derivatives. So at this point, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with L'Hopital's rule. So I'll just kind of show you like everything that I've kind of gone through. So I have already kind of explained this in the first video. And then in the process of doing the, the other three previous videos, I've talked about how to use L'Hopital's rule with all of these different indeterminate forms. So I highly recommend that you kind of have some idea of how to work with this before you jump into this video. So what I want to do here is I just want to show you something that can happen. And then what do you do when that happens? So let's say that I've got this limit here. So I've got the limit as X approaches infinity. I've got this square root, this square root. So just notice, you know, if you try to plug in infinity or, you know, the, the idea of infinity, what happens as we go towards infinity, you're going to end up with this infinity over infinity form, which, you know, would normally tell us that, you know, we're good to go for L'Hopital's rule. So what I want you to do to, to kind of see the point here is I want you to go ahead and, and take the derivative and I'll, I'll take it as well. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I, I took the derivative of the top and bottom. And so now what you'll notice here is if I were to try to just simplify this a little bit more, so I could simplify this whole thing as the limit as X approaches infinity of, let's see, we could really take this one half and bring it up to the top. So that this, this coefficient will be four. Then I can take this negative exponent and bring it up to the top. So this will be X plus three to the one half. And then I'll take this other uh, negative exponent and I'll bring it to the bottom. So now this is gonna be four X plus one to the one half. So I just dropped the square root notation. And so now if I try to actually, you know, evaluate as X goes to infinity, I still have the same problem, right? This is still gonna end up with infinity over infinity. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take another derivative. So let me do that. And so now you can see like this, this looks very similar to the last situation that we just had, right? So if I simplify all of this, like this is going to look so much like where we just started. And so let's see, so what I end up getting here, this will ultimately become four. Um, oops, let's see, this will end up becoming two X plus three to the negative one half. And then this will be two times four X plus one to the negative one half. And you know, I can simplify this, but what's gonna end up happening when I simplify this is I'm really back to square one, right? So you can see now just from taking the derivative twice that this thing is just gonna cycle for forever. So we, we can't really use L'Hopital's rule here. Like there's no, there's no reason that we can't try to use it, but this is a thing that can happen is you can have these derivatives that just kind of cycle. So when that happens, then you've really just gotta go back to the drawing board of all of your previous limit knowledge to figure out how to, how to get this done. So let me clear all this off now. And so now let's think about this another way. Well, this is a limit as X goes to infinity. So we know some things about that. And then also the fact that we have really the same root on top and on bottom, I can rewrite this whole thing. So I can instead write this as the limit as X approaches infinity of just the square root of four X plus one over X plus three. And so now what I can do is I, I really could just think back to good old, you know, the good old days of working with this before we had L'Hopital's rule. So really I just wanna divide by the highest power of X. So I really wanna just divide the top and bottom. I'm gonna divide the top here by X and I'm gonna divide the top here by X. So what I end up getting then is the limit as X approaches infinity. This is now the square root. Four X divided by X will be just four. This will be one over X. This will be one and then this will be three over X. So there's how that whole thing will simplify. 
And so from here, now I can say as x goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. So what I'm left with then is the square root of 4 over 1. So that's just really the square root of 4, which is just 2. And so that would be the limit in this case. So, you know, you have to think a little bit before you just jump right into L'Hopital's rule. And sometimes, you know, it's going to seem just fine to kind of go that way. Personally, I think it was more work to take derivatives in the first place than to just do this. Like, I, I think if I, you know, had a little bit of hindsight and I, and I had my choice of techniques, I would have probably just gone to this. So the point here is that, you know, sometimes people see L'Hopital's rule and think, oh, it's, it's going to be how I do everything going forward. But in reality, it's not always going to be the quickest route. So, you know, all those other limit techniques that you've learned in the past are still good here. Okay. So now let's pivot to a totally different type of problem. And, you know, the, the idea here is that, you know, as you um, kind of continue to learn about this, you, like anything goes with these types of problems. Okay, so notice if I try to evaluate this as x goes to infinity, so I'm, I'm going to kind of end up with this like infinity minus infinity and then like I could try to break this up whichever way and I'd end up with infinity over infinity. Like there's, there's actually like multiple indeterminate forms that go into this. And then let's see what happens if I take the derivative. Okay, and so now you can see that by taking the derivative, this didn't really help me at all, right? So now I just have all these extra natural logs in here, which are just basically extra constants. And if I keep taking derivatives, I'm just going to get more and more natural logs. So this whole thing is, is not going to be helped by using L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to have to get a little creative again. Okay, so let me clear this out. And now we have to think a little bit creatively here. Now, this is something that I don't think is necessarily like taught, but you have to just think about exponent rules for a moment. So you notice that all of these have x's. And you can't factor them out. I do want to. I do want to address that. So I can't write two minus five to the x because that's that's not how exponents work. If you're questioning that, like why does that work? Think about like a plus b squared. This is always the classic example, right? This does not equal a squared plus b squared, right? What this does equal is you have to actually foil this all out. So. I can't just like try to rewrite this whole thing without the x's. So the x's have to stay put, um, and I'll, I'll get rid of that. So let's think about going a different route, and notice here that I've got 5 to the x here and 5 to the x here. So what if I just divided everything by 5 to the x? Okay, so this is thinking a little creatively now. So let's go ahead and let's just work that out for a moment. So I've got 2 to the x over 5 to the x. I've got 5 to the x over 5 to the x. I've got 5 to the x over 5 to the x. And then plus 3 to the x over 5 to the x. Okay, so I've got everything here. And now you can see this is going to go to 1. This is going to go to 1. And then for these two things, so the two, 2 to the x over 5 to the x and 3 to the x over 5 to the x, so since these both have the same exponent, I could rewrite, say, I'll, I'll focus on this one for a moment, I could rewrite this as 3 over 5, it's a terrible looking 5, sorry, 3 over 5 to the x, I could rewrite it like that and it would still be equivalent. So let's see if that helps us at all. So. Sometimes when you do this, you're, you're kind of playing around a little bit. So let's see, I've got 2 over 5 to the x minus 1 over 1 plus 3 over 5 to the x. Okay, so now I've, I've definitely simplified this, and now I need to rethink what happens as x goes to infinity. Well, in this instance, so I've got 2 over 5 the x. So, so if I focus on this for a moment, so maybe I'll, I'll take the, actually the limit of this. So let's think about this. The limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over 5 to the x. Well, the thing is, is that this is a fraction that is smaller than 1, right? So 
you can kind of prove this to yourself if you want. So if I, if I want to take x and let's see, 2 over 5 to the x. So let's think about just increasing powers of this. So how about a power of 10, a power of 100, and a power of 1,000? Because that's what's going to happen, right? x is just going to continue to get larger and larger. So let's, let's evaluate that. And so I just took a second to kind of throw these into a, a calculator. And so at 10, at the power of 10, this was very small. At 100, this was a super, super small number. And then at 1,000, my calculator just told me that this equals 0. This might as well just equal 0. So as x goes to infinity for this fraction that is less than 1, this whole thing then is going to end up going to 0. Okay. And then the same thing can be said of 3 over 5 to the x, right? Because this is also less than 1. So now I can really finish evaluating this. So let me get rid of this real quick. And so now I know that this is going to go to 0. I know that this is going to go to 0. So really what I'm left with after I evaluate the limit is 0 minus 1 over 1 plus 0. So that's negative 1 over 1. So this will just equal negative 1. Now, of course, if this came out to be something over 1, then you'd have to kind of rethink what would happen. So you have to kind of take this on a case-by-case -case basis. But that's kind of the, the approach that you could take. Okay, and so now for this final one. So in, in this case, so notice once again, so I've got the limit as x approaches infinity. I've got e to the x squared. 3x squared times e to the x. So notice, like, right away, just if I think about as x goes to infinity, I'm going to get infinity over infinity. So I want to try to use L'Hopital's rule, so let's go ahead and take some derivatives. So I've simplified now the, the top and bottom as much as possible. You can see all the work it took for the derivatives. And now just by looking at this, you can also see that <laughs> these e to the x's on the top and on the bottom, they, they aren't going to go away. And, and we still have like this x here. So no matter what I do, I'm always going to have kind of these, these e to the x's in here. So this is just going to kind of go on forever if I try to just take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So I do need to think about this a little bit differently. So let me clear off this work. And now let's go a slightly different route with this just to see if there's some sort of clever manipulation I can make. Well, the thing to notice here is really like that you have two e to the x's here. And I know that this says x squared, but I could technically simplify these like this. So remember the good old um, quotient rule for exponents. You just subtract the bottom exponents. This would be e to the x squared minus x now over 3x squared. And so now it looks like once again I'm going to have that, that infinity over infinity, but maybe if I make that manipulation I can now use L'Hopital's rule. So let's try it again. Let's see if, if L'Hopital's rule will work. So I'll go ahead and take some derivatives again. Okay, so in this case at least I don't have an e to the x on top and on bottom. So it kind of looks like if I continue to take derivatives, I, I might get somewhere. So right now I'm still going to have infinity over infinity. But what I'm going to do next is, is take another derivative and see if I can get a, a better answer here. So let's take one more derivative. Okay. <laughs> and so now I finally have kind of something I can, I can work with here. So notice that the denominator is no longer going to end up with, like, as x goes to infinity, th this is just going to end up going to 6. So I can make a much more definitive answer now. The whole thing with L'Hopital's rule, it's not that you don't want to have infinity in the answer. It's that you can't have this infinity over infinity. This is indeterminate and tells you nothing. But now, because I've taken the, I've, I've manipulated this and I've taken this derivative a couple of times, now I can actually make a much better assessment about this. So as x goes to infinity, the top is still going to infinity, but the bottom is going to 6, which then I can make the definitive answer. If I've got the top going to infinity and the bottom going to 6, really this whole thing is just going to infinity. And that is a legitimate answer. So keep in mind that the goal here is not to get rid of the infinity, it's to get rid of the again, infinity 
over infinity or whatever indeterminate form that you're dealing with. So that's the goal here is to just not have an indeterminate form. And so that'll cover it for this video. So if you've watched my whole series, thank you very much. Consider giving me a like or a subscribe if you find my content helpful. Also, I have another video of just straight up examples of Blopi Tell's rule. So if there is anything that you wish you saw more examples of, be sure to check out my examples video. Thanks for watching guys. I will catch you next time.